What's up guys? We're in an era where seemingly every NFL team is desperate to get themselves a shiny new stadium. It's as if the owners get into quite the war of the Eagles by trying to outdo one another when it comes to building a stadium. For the 2019 NFL season, there were 31 different stadiums uh, because the Giants and Jets currently share MetLife in New Jersey and their New York teams. Okay. But the LA Rams and Chargers are about to share their own stadium as well in the very near future. The Oakland Raiders will get something new when they move to Vegas. And in the coming years, numerous other teams will look to replace their current venues. Some stadiums are on their last legs. So before they get replaced, it's a good time to see how these aging structures stack up against the new state-of-the-art stadiums that are being built today. And that's exactly what we're about to do as we rank all 31 NFL stadiums from worst to first. Make sure to subscribe to TPS and put on your notifications. We post videos all the time. New videos all the time. If you like sports content, subscribe. Make sure to comment your video ideas down below we'll be looking and if you choose your idea we'll give you a shout out in the video. Number 31 Ring Central Coliseum Raiders. The silver lining is that the Raiders will move to the fancy and brand new Allegiant Stadium once they relocate to Vegas because my god has Ring Central Coliseum been quite the mess of a football field. It's one of the worst stadiums in sports. The Coliseum also serves as home to the Oakland Athletics MLB team. Because they share the field the Raiders have been forced to play on a baseball diamond so the field quality is terrible and the stadium in general is outdated. It's no wonder the Raiders are moving. Their current home is a dump. Number 30, Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. Rams. There's a lot of history behind the Coliseum, having hosted the 1932 and 1984 Olympic Games. And it'll be a venue again for the 2028 Summer Games. Of course, this is only a temporary home for the Rams, but it certainly isn't a desirable one. The stadium is almost a century old, and it's not designed properly for fielding a football team, and parking is a giant ripoff too. The crowd atmosphere isn't exactly a sight to behold, as it seems like most Rams home games bring in more away team supporters. A move to the new SoFi Stadium in Inglewood can come soon enough. Number 29, FedEx Field, Redskins. The Washington Redskins have been a giant mess under Dan Snyder. So it sounds about right that their stadium would also be a joke. In his defense, Snyder has been pushing for a new stadium. In 2005, the stadium built dream seats to enhance fans' experience. But the views are horrible and fans in those seats usually have to stand in order to watch the game. So like, why? Why even have them? Gimmicks, I don't know. The quality of the field is bad. The location of FedEx Field is a major problem for the folks who take public transit transit to the games, and several thousand seats have been removed throughout the years. Attendance is declining rapidly under Snyder, so the game experience isn't something to put on your bucket list either. Number 28, Dignity Health Sports Park, Chargers. This is only home to the Chargers until they join the Rams in moving to the new Sophie Stadium. But yeah, it's not the greatest of venues for an NFL team. It's just not designed properly to hold an NFL club, and capacity is a low 27,000. It's home to the LA Galaxy of MLS, and the Los Angeles Wildcats of the XFL will play here too. And like the Rams, the Chargers struggled to bring LA natives to games, despite fielding a strong team. One look at their stadium and you can see why that is. Number 27, Hard Rock Stadium, Dolphins. Hard Rock Stadium has been home to five Super Bowl contests, and Super Bowl 54 will be played there as well. There's obviously a lot of history to appreciate here, but the actual stadium itself isn't so beautiful. The field quality is terrible, and it's not like the city deals with a ton of terrible weather. The stadium underwent $350 million worth of red Innovations. Starting in 2015, still we're not exactly dreaming about the chance to see a game in Miami anytime soon. Number 26, Paul Brown Stadium, Bengals. Not a whole lot to really hate. Uh, there's just not a whole lot to love either. Attendance is consistently near the bottom. And Mike Brown, one of the cheapest owners in professional sports, hasn't exactly invested much in terms of adding special features to the stadium. There's nothing really to see here. Number 25, New Era Stadium, Bills. The stadium has been around for almost 50 years now, and it's become quite outdated. Now the Bills have some of the loudest and most passionate fans in football. So the overall game experience is tremendous. I've been to a game and I'm not lying. <laughs> It's a good time. The fans are crazy. The field itself, it's small, but it's still fun. Just the whole vibe of the fans and the passion and then the insanity, really. The tailgate, oh my god, it's, it's definitely worth going. I'll, I'll give it that. But despite their tremendous fan base, the Bills really could use a new stadium. But it might have to be built outside of Buffalo. Does the Pagula family ownership want to do that? Probably not. So for the long run, Bills fans will have to stay patient and just make the most of a below average stadium. But again, the experience is dope, so the fans are great. Number 24, First Energy Stadium. Browns. The Browns have been football's worst team since rejoining the NFL in 1999. That said, First Energy Stadium is home to some extremely loyal and rowdy fans. Even if there 
hasn't been much to cheer about. The stadium has a capacity of just under 68,000. The venue recently underwent about $120 million worth of renovations. Still, there are 23 other stadiums we'd rather see before making a stop here. Number 23, TIAA Bank Field. Jaguars. This has been home to the Jacksonville Jaguars since 1995. The fans haven't had much to cheer about in the 21st century, and away team fans usually pack up the stadium. But the stadium itself has a very nice design, and it's located right on St. John's River. It's a beautiful location. The stadium has two wading pools, and it underwent a $90 million renovation project that was announced in 2016. The overall game experience is pretty good. It's not just good enough to outrank many of the other stadiums around the league that offer an even better in-game experience. Number 22, Bank of America Stadium, Panthers. This has been home to Carolina since 1996, and it gets bonus points for having really cool turquoise colored seats. It sure gives the stadium a nice look. It seats over 75,000 and consists of 151 suites, along with fancy video boards at both ends of the stadium. They recently enhanced the Wi-Fi at the stadium. Can you believe that? Which is nice, since everyone is staring at their fantasy scores on Sundays, and not the Panthers. There aren't any real features that stand out here. We also don't have many complaints at all. If you ever visit North Carolina, and make a stop here. It's not that bad. Number 21, Nissan Stadium, Titans. There aren't really any unique features about the stadium, but it's in a beautiful location in Nashville, one of the most popular American cities for tourists. It's not too far from the party and country music scene, and it's right near the main tourist attractions in the music city. Just two decades old, Nissan Stadium introduced a new food menu in 2018. Following fan feedback, they introduced the Hawaiian-themed number eight burger, inspired by Marcus Mariota's Hawaiian roots. The burger consists of sweet barbecue barbecue sauce, Swiss cheese, a grilled pineapple ring, and bacon. Wow, I kind of want that. <laughs> they also introduced Nashville hot chicken waffle. Even if you don't like football and you live in Tennessee, you may as well go just for the food. Number 20, Raymond James Stadium, Buccaneers. It's too bad that Tampa Bay doesn't give the fans much to cheer about. No wonder the attendance is low. This is the only stadium with its very own pirate ship, which is measured at 103 feet long. Unfortunately, the Buccaneers tend to walk the plank far too often at home games. Sorry if that joke sucked, but it's true. The stadium is just over two decades old. It's set in a beautiful location as well. The new video boards at each end zone are 9,600 square feet. Even if the Bucks don't do a whole lot of winning these days, the end game experience is pretty nice. I honestly just want to go on the pirate ship. That seems pretty cool. Number 19, M&T Bank Stadium, Ravens. Since opening in 1998, this stadium has gradually added more and more seats over the years. Capacity was listed at 68,400 in 1998. Nine years later, the stadium's capacity moved up to 71. 1008. There are 128 suites at this stadium, each holding up to 24 people. The quality of the field is tremendous as well, and the venue is used for some NCAA games as well. Starting in 2013, the stadium underwent $35 million worth in renovation to improve concession stands and the video boards. And of course, the Ravens flock is one of the loudest crowds in football. And finally, it's easily accessible for public transit. Overall, there's a lot to like about the Ravens' home nest. Number 18, NRG Stadium, Texans. It's only been around since the Houston Texans inaugural 2002 season. The NFL obviously loves it because the stadium hosted two Super Bowls within its first 15 years of existence. NRG Stadium has a retractable roof, which is obviously a huge win for the fans. And of course, it includes a bullpen section occupied by most passionate Texan supporters. And in 2013, NRG Stadium introduced the league's biggest jumbotron, with each board measuring 52 feet high by 277 feet wide. NRG's scoreboard was eventually surpassed when the Jaguars introduced even larger scoreboards in 2014. But at least the Texans still outdid their in-state rivals from Dallas. Number 17, Ford Field, Lions. Ford Field replaced the Pontiac Silver Dome as home of the Detroit Lions in 2002. Located in the downtown part of Motor City, Ford Field stands right near the home of the Detroit Tigers MLB team. Ford Field was home to Super Bowl 40, where Detroit native Jerome Bettis retired after leading his Pittsburgh Steelers to a victory over the Seattle Seahawks. Of course, Lions fans haven't had a whole lot to celebrate over the years, but it's a beautiful indoor stadium with a fantastic fan experience. Not a lot of whining from us on this one. Number 16, Levi's Stadium, 49ers. Replacing the legendary Candlestick Park, Levi's Stadium has only been home of the San Francisco 49ers since 2014. It was the venue for the milestone Super Bowl 50 between the Denver Broncos and Carolina Panthers. Levi's Stadium also worked with the EPA to try to make their stadium more environmental 
environmentally friendly. It's got a green roof, plus solar panels. The stadium is easily accessible via public transit. Beautifully designed. Of course, there are complaints about the painful in-game experience when the weather in San Francisco is boiling, so that's no good. But if you can deal with it, there's nothing but good times ahead with a visit to Levi's Stadium. Number 15, Gillette Stadium, Patriots. The Patriots almost never lose here, so it's a horrible environment for the opposing teams. But at least they get to enjoy the experience of playing in a pretty fancy stadium. Gillette opened up in 2002, and it sits nearly 66,000 people. The quality of the field is excellent, and the stadium is surrounded by the Patriot Place Shopping Center. One problem is that the parking is ridiculously expensive, and the traffic is horrible. That's why you sometimes see a good amount of fans leaving a close game early. It saves them a few hours of waiting in traffic. On the bright side, fans certainly get their money's worth thanks to all the winning. So that obviously makes the in-game experience worth staying until the final whistle. Number 14, MetLife Stadium, Jets and Giants. As we said, until the Rams and Chargers move into their own stadium together, MetLife serves as the only NFL venue that's home to two teams. Located in East Rutherford, New Jersey, MetLife Stadium opened in 2010, and it has a capacity of 82,500. The stadium hosted Super Bowl 48 between the Seattle Seahawks and Denver Broncos. It also hosted WrestleMania 29 and WrestleMania 35. It's a very nice stadium with a couple of unique features. This includes on-field patios as well as five premium lounges. Number 13, Lincoln Financial Field. Eagles. It's one of the most intimidating atmospheres for away teams. Nobody needs to be reminded about the merciless and overly passionate Philadelphia Eagles supporters. But hey, visiting teams and their fans have to appreciate the venue itself. Lincoln Financial Field opened in 2003. The capacity is just a tad under 70,000. It features 117 luxury suites and a 100,000 square foot plaza for fans to enjoy. The field underwent $131 million in renovations, which included thousands of new seats being inserted, which means even more more rowdy Eagles fans in one place. That sounds pretty fun to be honest. Number 12, Soldier Field. Bears. Not gonna lie, the history of Soldier Field is a main reason why we placed it in the top half of our rankings. Soldier Field opened in 1924. It's the Fenway Park of the NFL. What more can we say? Win or lose, the Bears faithful are always supporting their team by bringing tremendous amounts of energy to the games. The stadium underwent a pricey $660 million renovation in the early years of the 21st century. It's a beautiful location. The history is just amazing and breathtaking, and the fans promise to make every experience at Bears games worthwhile. What more can you ask for? Number 11, Empower Field at Mile High, Broncos. This relatively young stadium has been home to the Denver Broncos since 2001. It's one of the best atmospheres in the NFL, having sold out every home game since 2001. In fact, the Broncos sellout streak dates back to 1970. That's over 400 games and counting. A giant Bronco stands at the top of the stadium, proudly representing the home team. Overall, it's a beautiful stadium, but we rank this one high based in large portion of the epic fan experiences. Whether the team is good or not, the sea of orange creates one intimidating atmosphere. You gotta love it. Number 10, Lucas Oil Stadium, Colts. It's often referred to as the house that Peyton Manning built. He turned the Colts into a franchise juggernaut after arriving in 1998, and his dominance led to this team getting a much needed replacement for the RCA Dome in 2008. The capacity for this gorgeous stadium is listed at 67,000. It includes a retractable window too. It's used for the NFL scouting combine and was host to Super Bowl 46, where Peyton's younger brother Eli led the Giants to a victory over the Patriots. Not too many different features here, uh, just speaking overall, it's a wonderful stadium. Number 9, Arrowhead Stadium. It's almost a half century old, but it's still one of the greatest venues in North American sports. The tailgating parties are epic, some of the absolute best you can dream of. It seats over 76,000, and Arrowhead has set numerous crowd noise records. During a 1990 home game against the Denver Broncos, the fans got so loud to the point where the officials had to stop the game. They told the fans that if it got any louder, KC would be charged with a timeout. Arrowhead hit 142.2 decibels in a week four 2014 game against the Patriots. The overall stadium fan experience and rowdy atmosphere makes Arrowhead a must-see venue for all football fans. Number 8, State Farm Stadium. Cardinals. The beautiful stadium opened up in 2006, and it's renowned for its superb on-field playing surface. It was home to Super Bowl 42 and 49, and contains a retractable roof and retractable playing surface. State Farm Stadium is home to over 63,400 screaming fans, though it can hold up to 73,000. 
The Cardinals sure haven't won a lot since their trip to Super Bowl 43, but visitors always get their money's worth thanks to the remarkable in-stadium experience. This is a stadium that every NFL fan should try to see at least once in their lifetime. Number 7. Heinz Field Steelers It has a beautiful location right on the Ohio River, and Heinz Field is home to over 64,000 screaming Pittsburgh Steelers fans. There is nothing like the terrible towel wave. It's one of the greatest traditions in all of sports. Heinz Field was also used for a key scene in The Dark Knight Rises, where Bane blows up the entire field. Numerous Steelers, including Ben Roethlisberger, made cameo appearances in the scene. And I'm pretty sure Heinz Ward, who is right there, was the only man standing at the end of that entire explosion scene. Pretty sure it was him. You can't beat this location. You don't find better crowd atmospheres very often. And the overall design of the stadium is just wonderful. It's just beautiful from top to bottom. Number 6. CenturyLink Field Seahawks. Located in the heart of downtown Seattle, CenturyLink Field is truly a class of its own. It's often regarded as the loudest and most intimidating atmospheres in the NFL. Even when the Seahawks were mediocre for stretches during the late 2000s and early 2010s, the stadium was far from welcoming. There's a reason they call CenturyLink Field the 12th man. This team causes more opponent false start penalties than any other, and the entire stadium itself has a wonderful design. And we love the tradition of a celebrity or former Seahawk raising the 12th man flag as well. The open air design shields over 70% of fans from any incoming rain. It has a convenient design for concession stands as well, thus preventing lengthy lineups for food and drinks. And like Kansas City, Seattle is known for its incredible tailgating rituals before games as well. An absolute must-see venue. Number 5. Mercedes-Benz Superdome Saints. It's been home to the New Orleans Saints since 1975. Yes, it's old, but there is no reason to replace this beauty. It's a historical artifact in its own. The Superdome has been home to so many incredible sporting moments, and it's here to stay for a long time. It's obviously well known for its white roof, which lights up at nighttime, the colors are breathtaking, and of course being in a huge party in touristy city like New Orleans, the Superdome is always home to a thunderous atmosphere. Put a Saints game on your must-do list if you're planning on a trip to New Orleans. Number 4. Lambeau Field Packers The Packers are the most storied franchise through the NFL's first 100 years of existence. Lambeau Field has been home to the Packers since 1957, and it's one of the most iconic sporting venues in the world. The stadium is named after Curly Lambeau, one of the founders, coaches, and players for the Packers. Vince Lombardi, Bart Starr, Brett Favre, and Aaron Rodgers are among the many Packer legends who made Lambeau Field such a key part of NFL history. It seats over 81,000, and the Cheeseheads sure know how to party. They throw some of the best tailgating parties, and the overall game experience is just incredible. And I mean, you see Packers fans going shirtless at freezing cold games. That's passion, baby. Baseball fans want to see Fenway Park in their lifetime. Times. NBA and NHL fans want to see MSG. Well, all NFL fans should make it a goal to see Lambeau Field, given its history and importance to shaping the beautiful game of football. Number 3. U.S. Bank Stadium Vikings. U.S. Bank Stadium replaced Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome as the permanent home of the Vikings, beginning in 2015. In 2014 and 15, the Vikings played at TCF Bank Stadium while they awaited the opening of the U.S. Bank Stadium. And boy, was the wait ever worth it. The stadium has a fixed roof and just a flat out beautiful design. The exterior is full of art. It's really hard to construct the stadium with such creative designs like this. The legacy gate has giant glass doors that are up to 95 feet tall. The turf suites give fans a premier close-up look at the games. There's plenty of artwork displayed around the stadium as well. It has everything you want in an NFL venue, which is why it was chosen to play host to Super Bowl 52. Number 2. Mercedes-Benz Stadium Falcons The Georgia Dome opened in 1992, but it was demolished in 2017. Since when does a major sports stadium arena close after 25 years? Well, Atlanta Falcons owner Arthur Blank just felt as though the good old folks in the city deserved an even better stadium. Can't blame them. This gorgeous stadium opened opened in 2017. It has a retractable roof and insanely cheap food and beverage prices. While practically every other NFL team loves ripping you off in the concession stand, the Falcons go out of their way to make your experience cheaper and thus more enjoyable. The stadium hosted Super Bowl 53 as well, and you have to think this beauty will be home to many more down the road. What an investment by Mr. Blank. Great call replacing the Georgia Dome. Number 1. AT&T Stadium Cowboys, the mother of all NFL stadiums. They say everything is bigger in Texas. Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones backed it up by replacing Texas Stadium with the new venue, which is referred to as Jerry's World, and rightfully so. The video screen at AT&T Stadium was the largest in the NFL until the Houston Texans built a bigger one in 2013. Jerry's video screen is measured at 160 by 72 feet. It's the 29th largest in the entire world. 
The stadium's capacity is 80,000, but it can be expanded to 105,000. In the first regular season game at AT&T Stadium, back in week two of the 2009 campaign against the New York Giants, Jerry's World attracted 105,121 fans. That became the biggest crowd for an NFL game ever. You can beat this stadium in terms of design, fan experience, and overall layout. The Cowboys Hall of Fame is located inside. Oh, and it has a retractable roof as well. Any complaints? Good. This is the number one must-see stadium in football, folks. Go check it out. What NFL stadium do you want to see most? Join me in the comment section below. Make sure to follow myself and TPS on social media. We post great content all the time. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I post videos all the time as well. If you want more of me, you should go there. Make sure to subscribe to TPS because we post videos all the time. Sports content all the time. Subscribe. If you like this video, give it a like. It takes one click. It really helps us out. Of course, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jason Miondo. I'll see you next time. My knee.